in a multicellular organism cells communicate with each other for various functions and also for the integration of various functions the ways in which they communicate are varied and that we will discuss in the lecture on intercellular communication so what is the significance in multicellular organisms signals actually determine whether a cell lives or dies for example there is a nerve suppose and it makes a contact with a muscle fiber if there is damage to the neuron what happens that muscle fiber also degenerates how is it possible this is possible because the contact between the neuron and the muscle is not only anatomical and not only for the functioning of the muscle but also for the growth of the muscle so it releases certain trophic factors which are important for the survival of the muscle fibers similarly there might be cells for which death is required for example they are infected with the virus so these cells release chemicals outside bringing in the wbcs which cause death of that cell so signals determine whether a cell lives or dies whether it remains quiescent that is silent or performs a specific function for example the release of chemicals acts on receptors which are present in various cells in different different organs and depending on which chemicals are acting on the cell cells perform a specific function and they also determine whether a uh, cell multiplies or differentiate or may even uh, remain silent right that it is not multiplying so it may multiply in uh, um, forming its own type cell or it may differentiate forming different lineages of the cell as we see in erythropoiesis depending on which chemical is acting on the cell there might be different uh, lineage differentiation it may go into erythroid series or it may go into myeloid series so what are the modes of intercellular communication first it can be due to the release of chemical substances so these chemicals can uh, travel via blood to various cells of different organs or these chemicals may act on adjacent cells then it is due to the interaction of surface molecules on the cells so there might be certain proteins which are present on the cells which interact with other tissues then there might be presence of communicating junctions between cells so so these are the three broad modes of intercellular communication we will see each mode one by one so first comes by the chemical substance and this signaling pathway is based on the spatial relationship between the sending and receiving cell sending means the cell which is releasing the chemicals and the receiving cell is the cell where the chemical is acting and based on the spatial relationship that means how far or near the cells the sending and receiving cells are present in space this signaling pathways are classified into endocrine pathway paracrine autocrine signaling and neurocrine or synaptic signaling so what is endocrine signaling endocrine signaling is where the sending and receiving cells are uh, present much far apart so in this case uh, if you see this diagram this is the sending cell and it is releasing the chemical in the blood and the chemical travels via blood and reaches to the receiving cells and uh, there might be varied receiving cells present in different organs so this is known as endocrine signaling or distant signaling so the chemical is released in the blood then comes the paracrine signaling in paracrine signaling the cells sending cells and receiving cells are present adjacent to each other and there is release of the chemicals which act on the adjacent cells so receptors for these chemicals are present on the adjacent cells for example the release of uh, histamine by enterochromaffin like cells in uh, stomach this histamine is released locally and it acts on the parietal cells causing the stimulus for hcl secretion so this paracrine signaling is basically adjacent signaling next comes the autocrine signaling autocrine signaling is important for self regulation so auto here word means that the chemical is released by the cell and it acts on the same cell so the receptors for the chemicals are present on the same cell 
example being the release of chemicals by T helper cells. So it releases certain chemicals which goes and acts on various other cells, cytotoxic T cells, B cells, but it also releases chemicals which act on itself. Then um, in certain neurons, the release of the neurotransmitters, these neurotransmitters go and act on the postsynaptic neuron, but these neurotransmitters can also act on the same neuron that is the presynaptic terminal from which it is released and regulate the release of the neurotransmitters from itself. Then finally, there is neurocrine or synaptic signaling, which is basically the release of the neurotransmitters by the neuron and these neurotransmitters acting on the postsynaptic membrane of another neuron. So, we saw that based on the spatial relationship between the sending and receiving cells, there are four types of chemical signaling, chemical mode of intercellular communication. So, first we have covered here, coming to second mode, interaction of surface molecules on the cells. Now, the cells are connected to each other by means of intercellular junctions and these intercellular junctions are functionally classified as occluding junctions, anchoring junctions and communicating junctions. So, the details of these junctions we are going to see in the next lecture but uh, Basically, these two uh, will be covered more in detail and communicating junctions, we saw that it, it is also classified as third mode of intercellular communication. So that we will see here itself. Now, these intercellular junctions, because of the presence of certain protein molecules and the attachment of these protein molecules to the cytoskeletal elements, they can also act as communication. So it is not only for adhering the cell to a particular place or holding the cells together. It also changes the functions of the cell. And this kind of signaling is known as juxtacrine signaling. So there is another term for this known as juxtacrine signaling. So how they interact as you see there are certain uh, molecules there is integrin okay so it is interacting uh, with the extracellular matrix then uh, one very good example is the platelet activation in uh, platelet activation there is something known as inside out signaling and outside in signaling so these are examples of uh, uh, these uh, juxtacrine signaling what happens that uh, there are receptors on the platelets and these receptors interact with the extracellular uh, matrix and uh, there is change in the shape of the platelets which then causes the release of the chemicals so these are examples of juxtacrine signaling let's come to the third type of signaling that is the communicating junctions which are present between the cells now these communicating junctions are basically the gap junctions, very famously known as gap junctions. What happens is that there is presence of certain proteins on the membrane and these proteins are transmembrane proteins that is they travel the entire membrane. So these proteins are known as connexins. connexins. Now you see in this diagram here two membranes are shown okay so maybe this is uh, one cell right and this is another cell so these membranes are shown here in this diagram and this particular protein is uh, basically the connexin now there are six connexins you see one two three four five six six connexins which are present on the membrane so here they are present like this these six connexins form a pore so they are arranged like that they form they are forming a pore then these six connexins in turn interact with the six connexins which are present on the other membrane so here there will be six connexins further which are forming a pore by the way six connexins together form a connexon which is basically a hemi channel so this one connexon forms a hemi channel and when this one connexon interacts with connexon on the other membrane this forms the complete channel or that is the gap junction so the pores come close together right and the substances can travel through these pores 
from one cell to another very important uh, example of this is uh, in cardiac muscle cardiac muscle behaves as a sensation why because the muscle cells are connected together by these gap junctions so if there is a uh, uh, depolarization in one muscle the ions from that muscle cell travel to other muscle cell and they cause depolarization there also and this uh, traveling time is very fast okay so that is why the entire cardiac muscle basically the atria separately and the ventricle separately they act as a syncytium that is they act as one unit now just one extra thing here that you see that uh, these proteins that is the connexins they are transmembrane proteins as i told you they also have loop for regulation of the gap junctions that means the functioning of these gap junctions can also change so we have discussed all three modalities of intracellular communication more details of intracellular junctions will be covered in next lecture